So what have we got here? We've got the uh, CTEC battery charger. That has just delivered a full charge into this battery. This battery is from my Range Rover and it was failing to start after a couple of days. It, I don't know if it was um, internally leaking away the current or the capacity is gone. But when I got it from... I've charged it a couple of times since I swapped it out in the spring. But when I got this from the garage it was reading 10.4 volts which is discharged. So this battery has had a full charge from the charger until all stages up to stage 7 were complete. And it's been taken off charge an hour ago and what we have now is a couple of leads connected to the terminals. The current, we're going to discharge the battery doing a, a, um, a discharge test to work out what the amp hours are. And the current is going from the battery through a regulated current load, a load test box. So I can set that to 10 amps. And then it's going also through a Yokogawa power meter and then back through to the battery. So the, uh, the current is, part, is, is being sunk by this and passing through the meter back to the battery. Um, but to make sure that you get the accurate voltage because there'll be drops in these leads you have from the Yokogawa you have these two sensing leads that is purely so that the Yokogawa knows the battery terminal voltage there's no significant current flowing in these leads and these are just clipped onto the battery copper wires battery terminal voltage so to measure the power um, delivery capability of the battery or the amp average we need to be able to have an accurate measure of the voltage So here we have the uh, control utility for the Yokogawa power meter. I'm just going to reset the data, uh, set the file name, we'll call it cap test uh, <coughs> on cook 70AH test one and cook and save it. And then when I press this start button, uh, it'll start it'll load the battery up to 10 amps and start testing and discharging the battery and integrating and also making a reading every let's have one every 30 seconds every 30 seconds it means the voltage the current the amp power that's been drawn from the battery the watt hours and then we can have a look and see how this battery is performing before we do a regen on it so let's start the test now there's the first update and you can see it's uh, it's uh, the test is working if i just pan around here there's utility running on the computer and then if I just pan over here the battery current is 9.98 .9 amps and in fact it's um, 10.01 amps on the, on the uh, Yokogawa 12.23 volts and it's integrating here this is the uh, milliamp hours or it'll change to amp hours when it gets to the next scale so I'm going to run this battery now until it's down to 10.4 volts and then we'll know the capacity to from fully charged down to 10.4 then we can try the uh, the regen on it, which is going to be uh, the option there, recondition of the battery, and then try the capacity again and see whether it improves the capacity or not. Who knows? It might be a fantastic thing. I can't see anything definitive about whether this works or not, so that's why I'm trying it, because I've, I've received a lot of questions. So, yeah, next time you see this battery, it will be at 10.4 volts, and we'll know how many amp hours it has in it to give up. So we are uh, 48 minutes, 49 minutes in and the battery voltage has dropped to 12 volts and we have pulled out 8.18 amp hours so far. So let's see where it goes. Place your bets as this could be anything like 70 amp hours. Well I've been sitting here um, just looking up now, glancing up now and again and uh, I'm, I'm mending this amplifier, just testing it now. But look, I looked up and it was like 11 volts and it suddenly fell off the cliff and we've been going for, if we just pan round to here, we've been going for 2 hours 32 minutes, 2 hours 32 minutes and we've got actually 25, oh sorry, 25.6 amp hours out of it so it is a, not a happy battery is it? But the <laughs> it's been 10 amps constant current and after 2 hours 33 minutes it's dropped to 9.14 volts 
so it's not happy so it is it is um prime for regeneration as i suspected it's not got much capacity so let's uh have a look at the graph shall we the spreadsheet at the moment it's a common delimited um, text file which has been loaded into excel and you can see it's quite surprising actually it's not what i expected at all um you can see the voltage and the current and the uh amp hours here and then the integration time is down there in minutes and seconds right same as here basically this is expressed in fractions of a minute um and what was surprising was it just fell off a cliff i'll just show you the graph i've done a graph one moment i'll just get the graph up so here's the chart these are just units up the side and you can see the red line is the capacity in amp hours you can see it climbing so as it's measuring it it's increasing 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 pretty much at a linear rate actually and then there's the um discharge current this little glitch here is some um, due to the fact that i had to change a lead because one of the leads was getting a bit warm it was, uh, the gauge of the wire was too small for 10 amps so i quickly disconnected it and connected the new one in so that's what that is and you can see look um 10 amps all the way along and you can see at this point it's here when i terminated the test and turned the current off you can see the battery voltage recover back up to something like 12.17 so it recovered quite quickly once the power was turned off uh, the current was turned off but the voltage is interesting because I was sitting here working away and uh, you can see it gently declining on a nice um, sort of steady rate and it got down to um, about 11 volts and then it just took a dive over a period of a couple of minutes it went from being um, discharging at the same sort of rate, and then suddenly here, 143, uh, up until 150, so seven minutes it took to dive down that last bit. And then you can see as it dived down to this point, it was kind of recovering, it was still trying as though it looked like one cell had expired, I don't know, but you can see the voltage has dropped. A couple of volts as though one cell had suddenly stopped um, producing enough power or voltage across it and then when I turned off it quickly recovered there over a space of a couple of minutes it got back up to 12.7 volts so yeah um, what it's just telling us is that we've got a 25.7 is it uh, where are we where are we where are we Yeah, so when it got down to um, 10.4 volts, which is here somewhere, 10.35, so that would be the normal cutoff point, and we got 24.8 to 24.9, so basically let's call it 25 amp hours we got out of that battery. So the battery does seem to be pretty screwed actually. And uh, yeah, so that's put it back on to recondition and then see if it makes any difference to this. I'll save this and then we'll compare the two charts afterwards. Well, the results of the reconditioning run we did last night. Duration was 1,054 minutes, which is about 14 hours. So this represents 14 hours, although there's nothing stated in the menu about the standard duration of, uh, of a charge. Um, and it went plowed straight in there at 4.5 amps. I had never seen this thing give out for 5 amps, although it's supposed to be a 5 amp battery charger. You can uh, draw your own conclusions from that, I suppose. And then we've got declining current with some argy bargy going on here. Don't know why. You can see it has this varied and did some sort of variation. Maybe it's doing some analysis or something. You can see the voltage going up and down there. Anyway, it continued to decline, and as it was declining, the battery voltage was charging and rising and rising and rising, up to about 14.4, which would normally consider to be a fully charged battery at this point. Um, you can trickle some more in, but you wouldn't go any further with bulk charge after 14.4 at normal temperature. Uh, when it got to this point here, it um, turned the current off, and I think it probably turned it off. You can see the battery voltage drop as the current was turned off and then it did some sort of uh, test or analysis all right and then here it, this part is the reconditioning cycle where it drove the it put in a couple of amps ramping down to one amp and then 
drove the battery voltage up to nearly 15.5 volts, which would be, at this stage here, it would be gassing the battery because um, it's overcharging. So there'd be a little bit of gassing going on there. And then it decides, okay, I'm done, and then drops back down. And at this point here, it went into the, the green light came on fully charged, and it was just support charging here. And this was declining slowly. The voltage was gently rising, look, up to 13.6. And you'd normally keep on trickling like that until you got to about a normal room temperature. You'd go to about 13.8 volts for a, a support charge. So there's a support charge. right? Now if we look down on the... Uh, this is a bit I've chopped out of the user manual. And you can see this is the reconditioning. It says 15.8 volts maximum, which is what it did. 15.5, okay, so it decided to finish early. Maximum 1.8 amps. Well, we've got 1.995 amps, so that's close enough to jazz. And here's the float there. And this is 13.6 volts at 5 amps. Well, it's not 5 amps, is it? It's um, 20, 25 milliamps down to about 11 milliamps. So the manual's not quite right. We haven't seen this stage of the pulse charging yet, this part here. Um, but I'm just wondering about this this bit here, look, you know, because we've got 4.5 amps and the voltage is pretty much stuck at 13.5. That's the voltage, terminal voltage. Stuck at 13.5 and I can't see where this refers to this. 14, increase voltage to 14.4 volts. I think that dot there is just a full stop after the V. I think that's supposed to be 5 amps, all right, which makes sense. No, it doesn't actually, does it? Because it increased the voltage to 13.5 or 13.4. Um, and it doesn't correspond with any of these stages in here. And then the increasing voltage to 14.4 was this stage here. Okay, which it did. So this um, must be that one. So 5 amp until 12.6 volts is completely wrong. It was pushing out 4.5 amps until 13.4, so that's wrong as well. So this is a real wild generalization, I think, from the manual. We'll test one of the other uh, cycles later. But what I'm going to do now is to do the discharge. Uh, oh, one more thing I can show you, actually, you might be interested in. If we scoot over here and then look at this uh, column as Yam Powers, column L, and then shoot down the bottom of column L, you can see there's a lot of readings there. And we stuck back in, that says 24.62. So if you remember last night we draw out 24.9 amp hours in the load test, and now we've stuffed back in 24.62. And I'm guessing this battery will be any good depending on where that power went, because I think last night one cell just gave up the ghost, whilst the others still have plenty to give, is my analysis of that. So let's do the discharge test. I'll get it running, and I'll come back to you when, uh, when we got that far. Yeah, so this is the discharge after reconditioning charge. So we reconditioned it and fully discharged it to 10.4 volts. <clears throat> and you can see here, look, that uh, it did pretty much the same thing. Current and voltage. Current, I switched it off there. The voltage just drifted down and went down and crashed in a few minutes. Uh, this is five hours, this charge. This discharge now um yeah so the bottom line is that it hasn't affected the capacity at all 24.3 amp hours so it's actually slightly less but you know within the uh margins for error it's we could call it the same remember it was 24.9 before 25 so the recon hasn't really changed the uh capacity of the battery at all it's not improved it at all what i decided to do was to carry on the discharge until the battery voltage terminal voltage was 6 volts and I just ran it down to 6 volts and it was absolutely completely dead flat battery you know absolutely um, in the hope that it would actually cause the CTEC to go into the desulfation uh, process at step 1 where it pulses the plates to try and remove any uh, lead sulfate that's um, formed between the plates because lead sulfate is not soluble in water or very poorly soluble in water or acid so once it forms, it won't shift because it's stuck there. And the idea of the uh, the pulsing of the current, I think, is to break up or cause some electrostatic forces within it and cause it to crumble and fall to the bottom. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure it actually works. I think it may just be one of these electronic myths. A myth, I don't know. But anyway, um, where are we? Yeah, so the voltage 
Um, I should have started this test about um, a little bit earlier so that you've got more data because, you know, until I turned the test on, the voltage of the battery was 6 volts. But as soon as the charger was energized, and um, the, the voltage shot straight up to about 11.8. And you can see the charge current went up to 4.5. And this is the bolt charger, I think. And you can see it decreasing. Um, so it was pumping the current into something. But where was it going? I don't know. Because um, you can see there's a charge. There's the disconnection, the analysis, and there's the trickle charge afterwards going down half an amp. And it was charging, charging, charging. But this was um, after about eight hours this was taking, and it was going on and on, getting nowhere at all. Um, and you can see that the actual rate of, for the amount of time it was on charge, the rate of uh, the amp hour increase only reached up to 15 amp hours, okay? So really what we're saying now is that... Um, this dead flat discharge has really reduced the actual capacity of the battery to absorb charge for some reason. So it looks like we've screwed our battery. Just that it's just inter actually it's interesting to note, you know, just one really bad discharge of a battery that's on its last legs will kill it. Yeah, it, I think we've killed the battery at this point. I don't know that it can be regenerated or recovered. Um, I'm tempted to take the lid off and have a look inside and just see what's wrong with it because it's a sealed lead acid battery. It's only four years old, bear in mind. So yeah, I think we killed our battery. Um, so I'm not sure what we've proved <laughs> apart from an interesting insight into batteries is the uh, the chemistry of what's actually going on inside the battery at this point is, uh, is pure conjecture on my part because I probably don't know enough about the batteries. But I do know that we've killed this one. Uh, we've, we've. It is deceased. It has. It is no more. It's a dead battery. And um, yeah, so we went from twenty four point nine. We never imp increased the uh, the amp power capacity, and now the amp power capacity is about fifteen or sixteen amps. I know it's still ramping up, but the gradient is so slow, and the time was so long, it was getting nowhere. Whether it would actually fully recover or not, I don't know. But it's been on all night now, um, on charge. So it's had it's been trickling all night. So I will just do one more discharge test and see whether this continued to recover and whether the battery recovered or not. And then I think I'm gonna have to call it a day because hey, the video is getting very long, and I'm getting quite bored with it. I'm not sure I proved anything. I was hoping to see that the desulfonation worked, the desulfation test works. One thing worthy of note on the um, CTEC battery, it talks about calcium batteries. You can get the batteries with calcium, which are supposed to have longer life. And I think the recon charge might be to have something to do with reconditioning a, a calcium-based battery rather than the standard straight lead-acid battery. I'll look at that in the next video. So what I'm going to do is whip the top off the battery, probably. And if uh, the series uh, video two on this one will be the battery being taken apart and have a look inside and see if there's anything notable about what's wrong with it, really. I don't think it's sulfated because it's holding its charge very well. And sulfated battery plates, they reduce capacity because some of the plates might be covered in sulfate, lead sulfate. But this battery has been in my Range Rover and working, and it's been fine. So the chance of it actually sulfating have been pretty small because the car hasn't been left and the car's been driven. The battery's always been charged. And my understanding is that sulfate happens when the acid gets near to um, being water and the sulfate will form. So... Yeah, draw your own conclusions from that. I don't know if you found it interesting or not. I um, found it frustrating, but batteries are. But we haven't really yet got an insight into as to what's going on. So let's um, let's think about it a bit more, and I'll come back with some more videos.